Hey everybody, uh, as you can see, I'm not in my studio and I hate this so much. Mm -mm -mm. All right, hold on, one second. We'll figure something out. There you have it, a studio in less than 15 seconds. Ooh, I got this little Superman curl here. We'll just fix that there. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Rob Built. Tis your host, Rob, obviously. Today I wanna to talk about the top things that every short-term rental host slash Airbnb host needs in all of their Airbnbs. And a quick thanks to Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's video but a little bit more on them later. Now, if you've been following the channel a little bit, a couple weeks ago, I did a whole mini masterclass on furnishing your Airbnb from start to finish. This talks about couches, bedding, kitchenware, sheets, pillows. That video was more speaking in generalities. This video is very specific products or items that I think every Airbnb needs. Now, I do want to caveat that every single one of my Airbnbs don't have all of these different things, but I do want to say that every single time that I actually set up a new Airbnb, I am doing it with all these things in mind. So hosting really is an evolution where you start off cheap, but then as a host, you start to understand that splurging on certain items just really ends up saving you a lot of time in the long run. So take it or leave it on this list, but I really think that pretty much all these things are something that every Airbnb should have these days, and they are well worth the expense. And I'll talk about why, but you're probably gonna wanna stick around until the very end because I'm relatively certain a few of these are gonna surprise you. Oh, and as a reminder, well, I guess it's not a reminder because I haven't actually mentioned this to you yet, but I've compiled all of this into this handy dandy PDF, as well as a whole shopping list for your Airbnb to help you get started. So coming in at number one here would be a Roku streaming device. Now there is is actually a very specific reason for this. When I first started my whole Airbnb journey, I was supplying like Netflix logins, Disney logins, Hulu logins, like every single login that you could think of, partially because they were like tax write-offs and I could use those accounts to catch up on Riverdale. <laughs> I've never seen Riverdale. I don't even know what it's about. But now that I have 14 listings and more on the way, a lot of the times these logins just don't work for all the different TVs. And then actually people become entitled whenever you do provide like Netflix and Disney Plus and Hulu. And then they're like, hey man, why don't you have Discovery Plus on here? What the heck, man? I paid you $99 for this because it's always the cheapest guest that can play. So all to say, I've moved to a BYOL type of philosophy, bring your own login, and I make people log into their own streaming services because for the most part, everyone's got Netflix, and if they don't, then there's something deeply wrong with them. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I can already feel people like, TV's ruined in America! And guess what? People have not really complained about this. I was pretty nervous moving into this approach, but I've never had anyone mention it to me. So the reason I like Roku specifically though, is there's a function in there called guest mode that allows guests to actually go in and input their reservation date range. And then as soon as they pass the last day on the date range they give, Roku actually logs them out of everything on the device so that they don't have to worry about other people using their Netflix accounts. Also selfishly, one of the biggest issues that I have in all of my Airbnbs are remotes dying on on batteries and at this point I just buy a bunch of batteries but because remotes can be so finicky I just wanted to stop dealing with remotes and Roku actually has an app and a remote built to the app so that if the remotes fail you can use your smartphone to control the TV and really when the whole remote situation flares up which it does just like more than it needs to in my life I just point them to download the app. Number two on this list if you follow me on Instagram which you totally should then you know that I was like pretty obsessed with the new vacuum that I got in my house and vacuums are not an item that I used to carry in any of my Airbnbs and I've sort of changed this philosophy a little bit. And one of the things that I've learned is I used to just be cheap about leaving like extra cleaning supplies and brooms and vacuums and all that kind of stuff in my Airbnb because I was like, well, I'm gonna have to pay for it more and my cleaners just like bring their own supplies anyways. But what I've really realized over the past four years of hosting is that if you leave a lot of cleaning supplies, there is a very, very good chance that people are gonna clean up after themselves, especially if they have kids and they give their kids rice and those kids throw the rice everywhere, speaking from experience here, then it's just nice to have like a vacuum that you can go and vacuum up like dust and food and anything that kids leave behind. My favorite vacuum used to be a Dyson. I kind of feel like they're a little bit overpriced. Ooh, upsetting the internet. But actually I've moved over to a Shark now, a Shark Cordless Pet Pro. Again, I'll link it down in my little PDF below. But it's like $250 and yes, that's a little bit more expensive than I would typically spend on vacuums in an Airbnb. But one other thing that I've started to realize is that when I put cheap vacuums in my Airbnb, they break and then I got to replace them anyways. For example, I bought a $125 vacuum. It broke. I had to buy another one. 
that $250 when I could have just spent the $250 on a nicer vacuum. Now I know you might be thinking that's a wash, but no, now I gotta tell my cleaner to dispose of the vacuum. I gotta compensate them for taking a big bulky item. And it's just like, it's a whole mess because when you're replacing cheap furniture, you're not just replacing it, but you're wasting your time and you're spending more money to enact this whole process. So remember, as I've said before, buy nice, not thrice. But legitimately though, between you and me, the Shark Pet Pro Cordless, not an ad, it's pretty legit. Big fan, big fan of a vacuum. There are very few things in my life that like get me super excited. And well, I guess that's not true, but it's usually gonna be a vacuum, a very good toaster oven, and a new blender to me. Like when I get those things, it's a good day for Rob. So moving on to number three here, I'm a big fan of smart locks and deadbolts. I've pretty much like run the gamut on all the different smart locks out there. And what I really like about smart locks is that you can download apps and you can unlock them from your phone and you can set the codes from your phone and all that kind of stuff. However, there is now a new breed of lock that I'm a huge fan of right now, and it's the Slage On Code or the Slage On Code. And there's also the Slage Sense. Like Slage is just such a gross word, Slage. Hey, can you clean up all that Slage over there? <laughs> Uh, slage, slay slosh, slay slosh, slay slosh, slage. Wow, that was pretty good actually. Anyways, the Slage On Code is really nice for a couple of specific reasons. It actually integrates with your property management softwares, which spoiler alert, we'll get to that later. And it allows you to sync it up with that so that when a guest checks in, it will actually change the code to the last four digits of that guest's phone number. And then when that guest checks out, it deletes that code and then reprograms it to the four digits of the next upcoming guest. So to me, this is like the next great step of automation in an Airbnb and not having to deal with like deleting codes every so often. And yeah, this is very convenient. And just quick caveat here, changing those codes out every time actually costs money. It costs about 75 cents, which might seem like expensive, but if you think about having 10 reservations a month, that's only $7.50. And I promise you, it is so worth it. Guests love it. I've checked into Airbnbs where the last four digits were my phone number, and it's just so easy to remember and communicate that to like people on my trip. And now a quick word from today's sponsor. Should have planned for this a little better. Magic Spoon, I mean, I'm eating it right now, full disclosure. All right, seriously, I am so excited about this one because I love cereal. And if you're anything like me, you've probably thought at some point, I'm an adult, I probably shouldn't eat cereal, but not anymore because Magic Spoon is a much more guilt-free and healthy version of your typical childhood cereal. Because they're high in proteins, they've got no sugars, no corn syrups, zero sugar alcohols. Like, I didn't even know that that stuff was in cereal, so already I already feel better about eating Magic Spoon. Every single serving is low carbs, specifically four grams of net carbs. That, let me just like read this for you. It's high protein, keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, wheat free, and 140 calories per serving. In fact, it was so good that my daughter wanted some when I was shooting the B-roll for this. Come on, that's adorable. So click the link in the description down below and use promo code RAWBUILT for $5 off your very first order of Magic Spoon. Or you can go to magicspoon.com slash RAWBUILT to save $5 today. That's it, that's the end. So number four here is gonna be a good memory foam mattress. I'm actually a big fan of Zynus or Zenus. I'm not really sure how it's pronounced, but over the years I have bought many mattresses, like 40, 50, 60 mattresses at this point because they're so cheap. They're anywhere from two to $400 for like nice memory foam mattresses that are legitimately probably made in the same factories as Tempur-Pedic is my guess. So I've purchased my fair share of mattresses. The Zynus brand is really great. Sleep Signature is really great. And Ula or Ulu, let me, let, me, let me look that up. Uli, Oli, it's O, <laughs> it's O L E E. After months of research, I figured it out. I think it's Oli. So Zyna, Sleep Signature, Oli have all functioned very well for me. And people mention how comfortable these mattresses are in the reviews all the time. Moving on to five, which isn't really the greatest departure from the mattresses, but you know what I don't like? Bed bugs. And I have been able to avoid bed bugs in all of my Airbnbs. I even, I hate, I hate vocalizing that because I know that like after this drops, it's gonna be like bed bugs in every single one of my Airbnbs. But the reason I've been able to mitigate this is because I just have really good mattress protectors. Mattress protectors are absolutely essential for every single mattress that you have in an Airbnb because you just don't want people's on your mattress. <laughs> Cause you just don't want the smells and the liquids and the gelatins and the pastes associated in wine. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> I don't know if there's a way to diplomatically word this. Look, a lot of people sleep on those beds and you just wanna make sure that those beds are protected because you don't wanna spend 300 bucks on a new mattress because again, now you're gonna have to have a cleaner dispose of that mattress and it's a whole headache. A mattress protector is like 15 bucks and I use this one right here. I don't know what brand it is. I've literally bought like 50 or 60 of these on Amazon. They work great. They've never ripped on me. So 15 bucks is well worth the investment to just keep, keep things sanitary. <laughs> Number six here, I hope that every single Airbnb host has this because if you don't, you're just, you're not securing your premises as much as you could be. That's a ring doorbell. This is just like an absolute requirement for every single one of my houses and cabins and everything. The only time that I don't have a ring doorbell is whenever one of my houses don't have internet, which is only like one or two. And if I'm being 100% honest, we actually do have a ring doorbell on one of the houses that we don't have internet because at the end of the day, it's just kind of a deterrent. And this has actually really come in handy for me many, many times. For example, about two days ago, I was going and I was picking up dinner and I got a phone call from a guest and he was like, hey, um, and I was like, uh, I was like, sorry, calm down, who is this? He's like, hey, my name is Rob, I'm staying at your Airbnb. My girlfriend was sitting on the couch and then she heard a banging on the door and then the person like kicked it open and startled her and I was like, well, did she see him? She's like, no, no. As soon as he like kicked open the door, he ran away and I was like, okay, is he, is he okay? And he was like, yeah. So then he handed the phone to his girlfriend, she explained the situation to me and I was like, man, I'm so sorry, let me check my ring camera. I looked at the phone, I ended up pulling it up right there on the phone and I was looking at it and I'll go ahead and play it here. But basically someone was playing ding dong ditch and they ran up to my door and they rang the doorbell a bunch of times and they banged on it super fast and they ran away as fast as they could. And like, we looked at it, I sent it to her. I was like, hey, I'm sorry that happened, calm down. Here's actually the video from the ring. I sent it to her, we diagnosed it, we see it and I was like, as you can see, his right hand is moving very quickly by the doorbell he was ringing it. Can you enhance the image from here? Can you enhance him right here? Can you enhance it? Can you enhance it? Can we enhance this? Can you enhance it? Hold on a second, I'll enhance. And she's like, oh, okay, I feel so much better. Now, if I actually didn't have that footage in that moment, they probably wanted to have canceled the reservation and just stayed at a hotel or a different Airbnb that night. And it would have just been a bit of a mess to sort through. But because I had it, they saw it and they're like, oh, thank goodness. Okay, it looks like you're right. And we were all good. We were able to resolve everything within five minutes. And it's all because I had the ring doorbell. On top of that, I have guests that are not very good at using keypads. So they'll ring the doorbell and they're like, uh, I don't, the keypad's not working. And I'm like, did you, did you push the enter button or the check mark button after the code? And then they're like, no, sorry. And then, you know, I can let them in versus them calling me and interrupting me and all that time. Like I'm able to pull it up very quickly, talk to a guest, address any issues that they may be having at check-in. I'm also able to look at when my cleaners, my contractors, my vendors are coming to make repairs at my house. And I can monitor that from whatever Chipotle I'm chilling at. All right, moving on. Again, not a super far departure from the doorbell, but I'm also a really big fan of two things here. The ring floodlight, which is really nice to keep that consistent because you're already paying for like a monthly plan and you already have the ring doorbell. Ring floodlight just gives you a little bit more coverage. There's a siren built into it, which I used that the other day when I saw someone on my property. I pushed that siren and I was just doing that for like 10 minutes and I was like yelling through the speaker and I was like, hello? Who's there? And then it was like my handyman and he called me. He's like, hey man, your siren's going off like crazy. And I was like, all right, well, I'm glad to hear it's working. It just gives me like a broader view of my property. It's got the actual light on it for nighttime and it's got a pretty good night vision on it. It's got a siren. So for me, I like the ring floodlight. There are plenty of products that will probably do the trick, but that's the one that I use. And I'm also a really big fan of Arlo cameras as of recently. Arlo has like wired and wireless ones. I like the wireless ones. You can charge them in your house and then you can just click it into the bracket. No wires, super easy. And it's not the cheapest thing. I think it was like four to $600 is what I paid for them. But I've got really good coverage of my house now. Arguably, I didn't need the Arlo and the ring floodlight, but it's a whole bunch of cameras on every side of my house. I just feel protected. One really big pro tip here that I'll give you though, as a host, just because you have cameras doesn't mean that you should check them, all right? So the more you're checking your cameras and you're snooping on your guests and you're seeing all that kind of stuff, you're just gonna really deal with a lot of frustrations and you're gonna just, you're gonna see that a guest said that they put down three guests and then five people show up and then you're gonna be like fuming to your business partner or your spouse like I can't believe that they showed up with five people so that they wouldn't pay the extra guest fee and then you're like trying to figure out like how to respond to your guests and then you're gonna send a snarky message to your guests and you're gonna be like hey you said you had three and then they're like oh my god I'm so sorry my dad chose to like join last second I'll pay the fee it's like it's a whole thing and then you're gonna just be nickel and diming your guests you're gonna be losing sleep you're gonna be getting a lot more gray hairs so for me I'm all about having the cameras and checking them when I really need to but don't use them as a way to snoop 
sleep on your guests because that's A, that's weird. And B, you're just never gonna be a stress-free host that way. If you're an Airbnb host and you're watching this right now, leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you agree with this or not because I feel like most of us feel this way. And by the way, I know that these are very specific products and everything, but they really do serve a function for my Airbnb business. And we cover all these types of things and way more in host camp. So if you're interested in learning about my mentorship program, I'll leave a link in the description down below for you. Moving on to perhaps one of the most replaced things in my Airbnbs, pots and pans in a knife set. Hey, you do want these things, but you do want to splurge on these two items because a bad knife set like from TJ Maxx, that's like 20 bucks. They're going to be dull. They're going to break. Like literally the steak knives and those $20 knife sets, they break if you actually try to cut into a steak. It's delicious. Of course. It's happened to me several times at my own Airbnbs when I'm using my own stuff and I'm like, oh, if this broke for me, it would certainly break for a guest. And also pots and pans. Talking about making a little croissant, a little omelet here and a souffle and all that. Look, if you have guests that actually cook and you buy cheap pots and pans, they will warp on you. They'll stain super easily. They'll be all like kind of burned and black on the bottom and you're just gonna have to swap them out anyways. So for me, I've stopped buying pots and pans from like TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Ross, and even Amazon. And I now buy my pots and pans from Costco. A good set of pots and pans are gonna be at least $100 from Costco, but really now I'm spending between $120 to $150 for pots and pans because I hate replacing pots and pans. And also like, if there's one thing that can make your Airbnb just seem super crappy, like people will put up with a lot of little different janky things in your Airbnb. But for me, I feel like the straw that really breaks the camel's back on this is just like, if they're like, okay, that's not ideal. Okay, that's not ideal. You know what? Let's cook some food and it's gonna be fine. And then they like take out like a warped pan and it's just like, dum, dum, dum. and then they're like, why? and then they become Satan, apparently. So yeah, I think for me, when I go into Airbnbs and all their pots and pans are unusable, that's usually pretty annoying to me and the sign of a very, very cheap host. Been there, done that, it's just not worth it. So I promise you, pay the 150, I think you'll be happy you did. Moving on here, not a physical product, but like a product slash service. That's just gonna be a good PMS, a property management software. This is super important for me. I didn't really get into this whole world until like way too late in my Airbnb game. I should probably like, should I make a video on this? Like a little bit more in depth on what property management tools I use? Yeah, comment below if you're interested in that. And I'll probably have a, I'll probably make a video on it. I probably will, you don't have to comment, but if you do, it'll make me feel better about making the video. But like a good property management system, just for like automating all the different aspects of your Airbnb business. This is gonna be automating your communication. There are some that automate your pricing with dynamic pricing. For me, the biggest one that I like is automating like my cleaners and like making sure that they're all set with their schedules and that I don't really have to communicate with my cleaners on a daily basis. Now there are a ton of different softwares out there. I've pretty much used them all. I use multiple at the moment. I've used Hospitable slash Smart B&B. And really my favorite, I think out of all of these is Your Porter, which is now called Guesty. Um, I've used this one probably the most over the last year. And like I said, they automate like leaving reviews, cleaners, messaging, all that kind of stuff. Not an ad, by the way. This is like an actual product that I legitimately use. But if you sign up with my link down below, you'll get $100 off for the next couple of weeks. And then if you're late seeing this, it'll be like $20 off your first billing cycle or something like that. You're welcome, by the way. You're welcome because it actually is a really great tool and I like them. And the reason I use like two to three of these at the moment isn't necessarily for the sake of efficiency. It's my job to be informed and educated on all the different property management software so I just use them all so I can see which ones I like. Do some research, find which one works for you, test them all and see what you like and what you don't like about them. Last one, a 10. We made it to 10, Caleb. I counted them out. Uh, Caleb's here, by the way. <laughs> What are you doing over there? <laughs> a good coffee maker, and good coffee is probably important, but for me, coffee makers, like, there is a clear line between a bad coffee maker and a good one. I probably spent a little bit more than I should, like on a Hamilton Beach coffee maker from like Costco. There are some pretty good ones on Amazon too. And I pretty much supply French presses in all of my Airbnbs as well, for all you hipsters out there that like super, super good coffee. As far as what coffee I provide, I don't necessarily always splurge here, but on some of my properties at a little bit more higher end, I do buy nicer coffee for them. Like Earth Bean Coffee, by the way, which is not an ad. Uh, they were an ad one time though. Thank you, Earth Bean Coffee. They sponsored the channel one time and I kept drinking them afterwards because it actually is my favorite coffee. And if you use the promo code, <laughs> there's so many like affiliate codes and promo codes, but hold on, hear me out. If you use the promo code RobBuilt, I think you'll get 15% off your first order. Okay, I just checked, it is 15%, and here's the thing, not a paid ad, they're not even an affiliate. It's just a discount that you can get on Earth Bean Coffee, no strings attached, although any link that I provide is always no strings attached, but I did wanna clarify that because I actually love the product, so if you wanted to go a little bit more premium, high-end with your Airbnb and supply really nice coffee, that's my recommendation. And that's it, that's my list for like, 
top 10 things that any Airbnb host needs in their property, needs to splurge on. And again, take it or leave it on some of these, but I am curious if you are an Airbnb host, which of these items that I talked about today do you actually splurge on and put it in your Airbnbs? I would love to know. I would love to know how far off the mark I am from all the other hosts out there. And as always, if you're looking to become an Airbnb host and you want me as your Airbnb ambassador, sign up with my Airbnb link down below and you'll get $75 when you host your first day. Hmm? Caleb, who doesn't like free money? No one. No one. All right, anyways, thank you so much for watching, but I'll catch you on the next episode of Raw Build. All right, see ya.